I have been wanting to be on Mentor Monday for a long time. What's up, man? How, How are, are you? you? What's up, man? How I'm you doing? Chris. Rustin, good to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Thanks for coming. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Are you familiar with Mentor Monday? Do you know what I do? Do you know yes. the goal? Yes, so I have been wanting to be on Mentor Monday for a long time. Okay. I'm going to clip that. I'm going to put it on my Instagram. Yeah, I've, I've listened to a lot of short story long, and yeah. I was like, I'm going to be on one of these things somehow. There you go. And, and here we are. are. Yeah. So the goal on this one is like just to have a conversation. Like you can literally ask me anything under the sun, um, and I really just want to like talk about it. Like this is my chance. Like on short story long, I interview a lot of really successful people, and and that's cool and really fun. And I think there's a lot to learn there, but I also think there's a lot for us to learn as well as the viewers to learn from someone like currently going through the grind and trying to figure it out. And it's a little bit of a different perspective. So. My goal is to hopefully be able to add some sort of you know valuable information to you and then also hopefully that a lot of the viewers probably have the same questions yeah so we can probably um, kill two birds with one stone so why don't we start by you giving me a rundown of who you are where you're from what you're working on kind of let me know all that stuff sure yeah so uh my name is Rustin Sotoday. Uh, I'm from Orange County originally. Nice. Uh, I just graduated from USC. Uh, I walked onto the football team there my freshman year. Mm -hmm. I've always been very entrepreneurial from selling t-shirts out of my locker in middle school to flipping tech gadgets on Craigslist mm -hmm. to flipping sneakers in college and now I'm working in esports. Mm -hmm. So uh, my company is called eColiseum. Uh, we are a brand that curates esports lifestyle through events, pop-ups, and physical locations. Yeah. So we launched the world's first esports gym uh, in downtown, literally right after I graduated. Yeah. And uh, basically, people paid us a monthly membership. That's where they got to game with their friends, yeah. compete in tournaments, and even hire professional trainers. Got it. And how do you make money off of that? Do you charge like a gym membership type of thing? Or? Yeah, we used to think about it as like a gym model, but then we realized it's more of a social club. Yeah. So like a Soho house for video games, if that makes sense. Yep. So there's like a membership fee? Yeah, Got exactly. It. Great. And then you, so like if I go there, there's just consoles and games and the whole thing set up just ready for me to just go play. Yeah, the, the way I describe it is like a very millennial approach to gaming, right? So it's not like what people used to think gaming was, this is a place where it's an experience, it's mm -hmm. a community, mm -hmm. and it's showcasing and elevating gaming as, gaming as a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. it's, it's different, mm -hmm. it's cool, mm -hmm. that, that it's, yeah. Yeah, I wanna come check it out. Yeah. Because the whole gaming thing is something that I understand is like so big and has so much attention on it, I just don't fully understand it, like meaning I haven't sort of immersed myself in it in any way and I'm terrible at video games. Um, so I haven't been able to like really jump in and like wrap my head around it. So I'd love to like just check it out and see what it looks like. Yeah. Know? So is that like your main, has that become your main focus more so than the events and all that stuff? Yeah, so basically like the journey was really interesting in terms of like we always knew that we wanted to open a physical location. Mm -hmm. And only recently did I realize that we've done so many things that's enabled us to become a brand, yep. like a lifestyle. Yep. And just like how, you know, Glossier or Revolve or these companies that have built a brand and then go into physical, yep. we just kind of did that inadvertently without growing the brand at yeah. first. Yeah. Um, so we did, like, the journey is really interesting. Uh, like, founded it in October 2016. Uh -huh. um, competed in USC's largest pitch competition. Uh -huh. So there are 285 companies that compete. We won $10,000 in that. What place did you get? Uh, third. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. It, it was a surreal experience, you know, like pitching in front of like 200 people, like six judges had five minutes. It was like a Shark Tank type of thing? It was, yeah, pretty but much. It was like, like an audience? Yeah, dude. Jesus. And like people I knew, because there were students in there, it was like yeah. really That's good. tense. Yeah. Yeah. And then so what from there? Like then did it take off pretty quickly or? Yeah, that really helped validate the whole concept. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were in the USC incubator after that and we started just doing events to build the brand. Yeah. So like we did events with Microsoft, LA Clippers, then we raised like a seed round. 
Um, that was led by the Hirsch Interactive Group. They're like a family office out of Texas. Yeah. They put like $35 million in Team MV, which is an esports team. Yeah. Uh, and then they invested in us to go launch this concept. Yeah. So it was a pop-up that we had done Got for it. two months. Yeah. We did that pop-up. We built up a lot of goodwill, right? Like we got sponsorship from Alienware, View, Sonic. Like literally the only thing that we paid for in there were like the tables, rent, yeah. lighting. Everything else was free. Yeah. The gaming chairs, the headsets, all that. Yeah. Um, we launched this series called Fortnite Fridays. Mm -hmm. And so this was before Keemstar, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just to make it clear. Yeah, it was a tournament series and we built like the largest Fortnite following in Southern California. Really? People were lined up two hours before the event started. Wow. The first one we did was with the ASAP mob. Yeah. We did one with Valky Ray, Phase Scissors, if you guys know any of those. But yeah, it was really cool. And so now what we're doing is we're launching a flagship in LA. Uh -huh. And just gearing up for that, we're doing a bunch of events right now. Uh -huh. So we're starting a festival tour. Yeah. We just streamed from the All My Friends Music Festival's Artist Lounge yeah. two weekends ago with FaZe Clan. We're going to be streaming at a lot of festivals that are coming up. I don't want to say the names to like potentially ruin it, yeah. but a lot of culturally relevant things that are happening, we're going to be there yeah. doing stuff. Yeah. So I'm very excited. Really cool. Well, first of all, congratulations because you're already kind of killing it. You know what I mean? I feel like you're like, you're, I feel like you could be our first guest that was on Mentor Monday and then graduates to Short Story Long. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm trying, man. Like, yeah, Thank like, you. I yeah, like that means a lot, seriously. Yeah. yeah. So that's huge. And I think that like, I'm really interested, you know, a lot of the people that we've had on this show um, have been like super, super new. And I think that that's really cool. And there's a lot of information to share there. But it's a little bit different perspective to have someone who's like really in the thick of it and has made some pretty big moves already. So mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to this conversation and like what type of questions you would probably have. You know what I mean? Yeah, there, there's a lot of mindset things. Yeah. Whereas before it was simple business things. Yeah. Now it's like the questions I'm asking myself are kind of crazy. Yeah. And so I'm looking for content like short story long, like yeah. things that can, you know, answer those from people that have gone through it. Yeah. So like, hit me. Okay. First, there's. I'm very happy right now. Yeah. Like I love my life. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. That's step one. That's the biggest step. Right. Like I wake up early. I meditate. Like I work out and just like everything's in balance. Yeah. But the problem is I feel guilty. Ah. Cause cause you're happy. Exactly. Yeah. Because I've always grown up in this environment that I got to be grinding. Yeah. Right. And so now I'm like. You know, I feel like I'm working smarter, but I'm definitely not working as hard as I did before. Yeah, that's great. But but it's like if and the business is progressing. Yeah. But it could be progressing way faster. Yeah. If I was working way harder, I wasn't like Why enjoying aren't you my life as hard because you're you're enjoying your life. Yeah, yeah, like just to give you an example, like Sundays only for family. Like I literally go to my cousin's house, all our cousins go over there. Yeah. We play Mario tennis, we hang out the whole day. Yeah. That's it. It's great. Saturday, I go out with my boys. Friday, I even go out too. Yep. But it's like before, during the pop-up, yeah. we, my co-founder over there, yeah. we were literally from Thursday through Sunday, we were there every day until like 2 a.m. Yeah. So I'm thinking to myself like, there are people around me that I don't know how hard they're working, but they're succeeding just as much as me, if not more. Yeah. And I'm questioning myself in terms of like, I'm happy, but I'm guilt. I feel yeah. guilty. Yeah. I feel like I shouldn't. So you feel, do you feel more guilty because you are happy or you feel more guilty because like you think you're not doing enough for the business? Does that make sense? Yes. To me, they're slightly different. Yes. What's the... It's the latter for sure. Got it. Okay. So here's what I would say. I would say, number one, massive congratulations to you for being able to do all of that and honestly sit and say you're happy and you spend all day Sunday with your family and like... That is definitely the rarest of the conversation because normally what's more common is either A, I'm just not successful yet, I'm just mm -hmm. working my ass off, or I'm, I'm relatively successful but I'm working until I want to die every single day, yeah. right? So to be able to even sit here and tell that story and say that you currently, right now, have accomplished both, that deserves a lot of credit. Like that's something you should be really proud of, not let it make you too nervous, okay. right? I think at the end of all of this, and this is the part that is like somehow sounds so easy but is so hard, is you need to just sort of become ultra clear on what you want. 
You know what I'm saying? And where your priorities lie. Okay. And I think that when you can truly answer that question for yourself, you can't feel bad about not living the way that somebody else might want you to. Yeah. I, and that might grow and evolve. And you might go, you might say, I mean, here's another thing to be mindful of. You might get an opportunity that comes up where for the next six months, you don't see your family at all and you're working, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then seven months later, you might be trying to figure out how you had such a good balance because you remember back when you were on Mentor Monday saying how happy you were. Yeah. Right? So yeah. that is how life works. I, like, just because it's this way now doesn't mean it will be this way forever. Okay. So I think there's a part of it that you need to just like be happy that you're even able to do this right now and that's a really good thing. A lot of people wish they could do that. Yeah. The other thing is get really, really clear on what you care about. And I am a very firm believer that not only can you be incredibly successful while being happy and making time for the people that you love. But I believe that for long-term success, it's a must. Okay. Like it's an absolute must. You're young right now and so you're seeing all these people just working their face off and all the messaging that we hear is like work your face off yeah. until you die. Yeah. Yeah. And But when you look at older, you know, I'm talking like 50, 60 year old, really truly wealthy, successful people, they all make time for family, for loved ones, for what they care about. Because that's the only way. It's the only way to keep working so hard for so long. You can work really hard for five years, but you will burn out and you will hate it and you will drive yourself crazy. And I think that that's something you have to be appreciative. But at the end of the day, like take some real time, decide what matters most to you. Okay. And if you even think, fuck it, man, I'm going to try for the next six months just working my ass off and I'm going to cut down family time. It's only once every two weeks now. Yeah. Like, fuck it. Try it. If you don't like it, go back. But you're in a really fortunate situation where you're able to have both. And I think that's something to just take a moment and, like, be really proud of and thankful of. Yeah. And not be like, well, shit, I'm happy and things are kind of working. Like, where am I fucking up? Yeah, you that's know? literally how yeah. I feel. I'm like, this is... This sh is weird. Yeah. This is weird. That's how I feel. Do you do like gratitude practice of any oh, sort? Oh yeah, like every yeah. morning. Like I have a journal. Yeah. And so when I wake up, I wake up at six thirty. I meditate. Then I have a journal that I write out like what I did yesterday. Yeah. What I'm looking forward to today, and then like what I'm grateful for. Yeah. And so just like a side note, it's funny like the way I'm seeing life now is like in terms of those pages. Mm -hmm. So like I looked back at my journal like from February, mm -hmm. and I was like. You know, we hadn't gotten our location for the pop up. I'm like, God, fucking, you know, yeah. like it's been two, three months. Like, we haven't gotten our spot. Like, what's wrong with me? Like, you know, screw this, screw everything, yeah, right? Sure. And then, in, like, fast forward 31 pages, it's like, got the so location, yeah. you know, like all this stuff. I'm like, wow, dude, like, how can I just, how could I be stressing? Like, all that's causing is like negative energy and everything else yeah. that I'm doing. Yeah. And it's producing subpar work. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, with that, in place, why am I letting this guilty feeling creep up? If yeah. anything, I should be like, this is great. I'm ready to just go even harder and see how much more balanced I can get. Like maybe I'm not entirely at the threshold of working too hard, sure. or maybe I'm not entirely at the threshold of being too lax. Yep. Maybe I can get better at that. Yep. And I think that's something you always gotta hone in on and work on. And I think that when you are 50 years old, you'll have it absolutely mastered and people will come to you for advice on how you did that, right? Yeah. Another little trick that I do that really helped me is I downloaded this app that lets you just print, you know, it syncs to your uh, printer, either at the office or at home, and whenever I get like a good screenshot, like, oh, you got accepted for the new office, or you're a big fan of what you guys are doing or whatever, I just screenshot it, or pictures, um, and then when I go home, when I'm writing, I also print and staple them to the pages. Wow. So it says for that day, and then there's pictures that coincide yeah. on most days. So when you do the flip back, you see like, oh, I was so happy about like that one uh, good feedback on Short Story Long or that, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. like now it's progressed. It's just a really easier way to like do that. But I would almost say that it sounds to me like that feeling may be a little bit of just something that you have to like strengthen your repellent towards you know it's the same as if you were super scared or you right. were super social anx socially anxious or you yeah. were super everyone has their thing but every time you notice that feeling sort of creeping in i would suggest going back to the like no 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 wait a minute let me take a moment to think of all the things that i'm so thankful for and that i'm able to even do this yeah. and i think that could help just strengthen you know what i mean right right so that's what i would say okay cool what else
Um, so this kind of came out of like, basically, I listened to the Tom Bilyeu yeah. short story Great one. Guy. That He's one, like a okay. neuroscientist. That was absurd. Like, what I've been doing is literally like my. I posted a story of your podcast, yeah. and I was like, guys, if there is an industry you want or something that you want to do, reply to me. I've listened to probably all of these episodes. Yeah. I will tell you which ones are the best for that type yeah. of thing, right? Yeah, it's like a prescription. Right. So yeah. I'm like, all right, look, number one, Kevion, right? Yeah. Episode 50. Start there. Number two, Tom Bilyeu. And then like number three, even though I'm kind of halfway through it, yeah. it's the episode 100 with Tom yeah. Bilyeu, yeah, yeah. Kevion. That's a big one. And um, Rob. Rob. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, I appreciate that. No, because I remember you know you told me that before. Yeah, like that's the most I could ever ask is that it you know it gets to the point and the people and the listeners start being like I have the answer for you know what I mean like you yes. want to be because my goal was to be so diverse with industries and keep <clears throat> growing that where you could literally be like anything that you could possibly be interested in. There's an episode for that. Exactly. I was like real estate. All right, bro. I got you prescribed. Yeah. Brian Toll H Wood. Go. There that's you. you. Like yeah. all that lifestyle. Everything. So good. Thank you. Um. So that Tom Bill you won. Yep. I listen to it, and he gets to the part about, you know, the fragile trait, or the anti-fragile trait. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I always want to be the smartest dude in the room, and I gain self-confidence from that. But the problem is, there's always people that are going to be smarter than me. Yeah. So I was always miserable. Yeah. But then I turned it around to be like, look, I just want to best, learn. Yeah, best learner in the yeah, room. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then I was like, all right, well, do I have that? Mm -hmm. What's, like, I just started asking myself questions. And I literally got to the point, and even though this was like three months ago, I got to the, or two months ago, I got to the point where I was like, holy shit, mm -hmm. I found my Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. The one thing that has messed me up in my life multiple times. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's going to get personal right now. But basically, like, soccer team in high school, like, you know, I was afraid of, like, being offensive when I was a forward, like, afraid of taking shots. I got benched, got kicked off the team, right? Yeah. Volleyball, pretty much the same shit. Football at SC. Like, my story of getting onto the team was so absurd. Uh -huh. Like, I snuck into the athletic building every day the first week of school, giving everyone my highlight tapes. Yeah. And I had never played a down of football as a punter. And yeah. that's what they needed. Yeah. And so I just taught myself. I made the team. Now I'm on the team, and I'm, like, afraid and messing up. And sure. so I was just like, you know what? This isn't for me. But realistically, it was just because I was afraid. Yeah. But I didn't know that. I thought, you know, it's not for me. Yeah. Right, yeah. and so I left that, and then you know, fast forward to like before e Coliseum, yeah. I had this video game rental app idea, uh -huh. shitty idea. I learned a lot, but it was basically like Uber for video games, right? Yeah. yeah. And so doing that, I was pivoting like every time it got hard because I was afraid it was gonna fail. Yeah. You know, and so now, like before we did the pop up, uh -huh. there was a point where I was like, I mean, you can ask him. I was like, dude, the pop up's not gonna work. Let's not do this. Let's pivot. Yeah. And one of my mentors, he was like, yo, if you keep doing this, you're going to be the fat kid in the corner of the room at prom yeah. who's afraid to dance and he's never going to dance. Yeah. That's going to be you. I'll talk. Yeah, no over bar. and over. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so I got to do this pop-up. And then I learned like there is a fear of messing up mm -hmm. because I always want to be the best at everything. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but like, the problem with that is there's always going to be someone faster than me or yeah. can jump higher or like is smarter. Yeah. So I'm always getting frustrated. I was always yeah. getting frustrated. And I'm like, all right, what, what's my anti-fragile trait? Yeah. I th think my trait now is like gaining confidence from making mistakes, yeah. sticking my neck out there, messing up, yep. being like, well, at least I fucking did it. Yep. Right. Yep. And so I've come to that revelation yeah. with everything I'm doing. I'm like, you know, we're opening this new location and there are concerns for certain things. And I'm like, I just got to go yeah. and push into that fear. Because if there's a fear, that's a sign that it could be something really good. Yeah. But there is a sneaking suspicion in the back of my mind of right course. now. Cool. Yeah. We have this like digital thing. Yeah. This digital platform that we've been testing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It works really well. Uh -huh. Like really, really well. Uh -huh. And so I'm like, we could just do that, you know? Yeah. And I've talked to different people and they're like, Bro, opening a physical location, you're 22 years old, like, you don't know anything about real estate, that's hard. Yeah. Digital's easier. But then there's other people that say the opposite. Yeah, okay, so short story long, I'm at this point, and I've already, like, it, I'm not really leaning towards digital, but yeah. it's still there. Yeah. And so I'm like, 
dude, is this one of those instances where I'm afraid? Yeah. And I'm trying to run away from it? Yeah. Like I have multiple times in my life? Yeah. Or is that really a good opportunity? Yeah. That's where I'm at. I don't even know if you can have an answer for that, yeah, but yeah. that's just like... Uh, I can have a little bit. I mean, this is what I would say. Number one, you have to first... Like, the first thing that we do is we get scared of, like, changes and advancements, whatever. And then the second thing that we do, which is the really bad part, is we think that we're the only ones who are, like, scared. And then we get really down on ourselves, yeah. right? And we don't realize that every single person has that trait. It's self-preservation. It's like the human beings wouldn't be here if we just ran forward <laughs> into things we were scared of, right? Yeah, we never yeah. would have made it. Yeah. Um, and so it's good, and everyone has it. And the difference of way of thinking about it is... The people who are really successful are serial entrepreneurs or very risk adverse people. They don't not have that trait. They've learned to deal with it, right? So you have to think about it differently. Not like, oh, I'm a pussy and these guys are all so fearless and I don't stand a chance. That's Word. not true. So I think for me, the big thing that changed my perspective on it, because I was the same way, and I'll tell you a little personal about me too, is when I came up, you know, I started, we started doing TV at a really young age, but my goal was always to be an entrepreneur, be a business owner, right? And so when I started Young and Reckless at uh, 22 years old, yeah. because I was on TV, I felt like I definitely couldn't mess up. I definitely couldn't look stupid. I definitely, whatever, because yeah. I just felt like everyone would be pointing at me and saying, They're ha, watching. Ha, the yeah. guy from TV is an idiot. Like, see, I knew he couldn't do, you know what I mean? And I'd walk into meetings at like Pack Sun and stuff, and they'd be so excited to see me because I was the guy from TV. Yeah. Well, what that tells me is I can't by any means be wrong. Right. I have to be just like exactly what they ever pictured, you know? And so I dealt with it heavy, heavy, heavy. And, and then I just realized that number one, that is just impossible. So if that's your goal, you're just chasing an impossible goal. If that's <laughs> how you want to live your life, good for you. You know what I mean? You're okay. never going to win. It will never work. Never. The other thing is we kind of think of the way that we view ourselves and the way we're taught is like, especially with mental, right? Physical, it's a little different. Is like um, you go into a situation that maybe you're bad at or you're constantly scared of or whatever. If you fail a lot, you start to get down on yourself, right? And you start to become aware of like, oh shit, I am a scaredy cat, right? I'm not the type of guy that follows through. Now you start labeling yourself. Now you start living out who you say you are, because right. now you are this type of person. And you might not even know you're doing it, because who would do that in their right mind? But you are doing that. And you're going home that day from soccer, you're going home that day from football, and you're saying, see, man, you are exactly who you thought you were. Yes. Now, here's the big thing that we are not taught, because we also label people. We say you're stupid, you're smart, you're... Um, you're uh, resourceful. You're th these are all like mental labels. They're labeling our brain skill set, right? We aren't taught, going back to mindset, that those can change and adapt and evolve just like our physical bodies can. Mm -hmm. So if I said to you, like, hey, man, you're not, you know, you're super slow. You're a super slow runner. There's no doubt in your mind that you could learn if you cared enough yeah. in the next six months to become a fast runner. You know you could, right? Yeah. Or you can't run a marathon, or you can't whatever. Because we just think about it that way. We know it's gonna be hard, we know it's gonna be tedious, but we also know that it is possible if that's what we want to focus on. With our mentality, we don't believe that. We think we are who we are in here. Yeah. We don't look, about, look at it like an organ, like a physical part of our body and something that could be strengthened. And there's now a shit ton of uh, studies and research and everything done that your brain can rewire itself at almost any age, right? We thought like, you know, after 18, you're kind of yeah, wired and you are who you are. Like 20s. Yeah, you can, I mean, 60 year olds can rewire habits and the way they do things and the way that they think about things. It's just true. And I don't know why we were taught otherwise, but it is a fact. So what I would say is you need to look at like maybe one of your shortcomings is you have a hard time deciphering between like the gut feeling and fear. Maybe that's what's happening, but it's not that you are labeled a scaredy cat, too afraid to do anything. So you just need to build a set of tools to get around that. Yeah. And I think, you know, for me, what that's been is when I'm faced with that sort of situation, from what I can see, you have a few options. Number one option is you need to go just truly with no ego 
gather as much information as you know how to. So say for the next two weeks, I'm going to ask anyone who I could possibly know, D, ask everyone, what are the positives and negatives of doing digital versus or digital plus yeah. brick and mortar, right? right? And write those down, keep a real list. Ask, any, read any article, do anything you can. At the end of gathering that information with no bias, with no pre-made judgment, make a decision and do it wholeheartedly. And if you fail, you can't feel bad because what are you what are you feeling bad about? That you're not a psychic? That you can't see the future? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you, you honestly took all of the information into consideration and you made a decision. And that is what you will have to do for the rest of your life with everything you do. Mm -hmm. With your diet, with your exercise, with your business, with your accounting, with your everything. It's about without a bias or without judgment, gaining as much information as you can and making a decision. That's what we do as human beings. Where people go wrong is they make up their mind first and then they ask three people that they get to validate them and then yeah. they make a decision and 100%. say like, oh shit. Yeah. So <laughs> you, you do that, you go for it, and then you start to put, like, kind of like Tom said, but my version is I, don't, I try to never place value on achievements. I place value on the courage to try the thing. Mm. So when I go home at night, I want to say, man, you did some shit that was out of your comfort zone. You went to that event, or you had that conversation, or you launched that collaboration, or you did this or did that, and I'm proud that I'm building courage, not building wins, right? Because the wins come after the courage. Right. So just be proud of yourself for gathering the information and taking a risky step and be pr start to build your self-esteem around slowly getting more and more courageous. And the same as if I asked you to go run the LA Marathon tomorrow, you wouldn't be able to do it, but you'd probably get, you know, probably do pretty decent. You're gonna work tomorrow on being more courageous and you're not gonna hit a home run, but you're gonna be okay and it's something to build on. And then you go a little further, a little further, and when you start to place your focus on that, building that strength like you would a muscle, now you're gonna look back at your journal in a year and be yeah. like, damn, I was a fucking mess. Yeah. <laughs> what was I doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what the fuck was I so scared of? Yeah. Like, now I just like, bing, 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 like, whatever, right? Yeah. That would be my advice on all that. At that point, if you do all that, you place your, you place your value on being courageous, you gather as much information with no bias or ego as you can, and you're the, you're a, you make decisions, you do shit, That's the t those are the type of people that win every time. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I would say. Okay. I heard loud and clear. Bit. No, it did because it's like these questions that I have, you know, I have two answers for them mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, left or right. Yeah. And hearing someone say you're doing all right, yeah. the, this is how you should be going and looking at it. It's like validation confirmation, right? Yeah. So it's like, it's good. And I would argue that there's the potential that you need to look at that you're, you're starting to build this like, okay, so when you're faced with a decision, it starts to make you anxious or feel fearful or whatever, right? So I would argue, because I do this too, that you make it left or right. You make it daunting. You make it like, fuck, I'm gonna have to leave this to go to the, you're also <laughs> sitting here telling me that you spend a lot of time with family and you have a lot of downtime. So maybe this is the point where it's not left or right, it's 75% left, 25% right, and you're able to test in a safe way and see if there's some future here before you go all in on this thing, but maybe you sacrifice some of the family time. Like, right. maybe, you know, there's an equation to all of this yeah. that works. It's hardly ever left or right, bail out and fucking jump off the cliff or stick with the old trusty thing and wonder wh what, what if, you know what yeah. I mean? Like I would really make sure that you're not making it so severe because you're making it scarier in your head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, totally. Um, I think the last question I have is, it's centered around like content, kind yep. of. So we're starting to like post vlogs, uh, capture all the stuff that we're doing. Yeah. Um, and so I guess like it, I think and a couple of us think that like the stuff that we're posting is pretty cool. Like yeah. it's at the level that it should be something that reaches a lot of people, yeah. but we're having difficulty distributing it. Oh, yeah. And so I'm wondering like, is this one of those things where I'm like, dude, you've only been doing this for six months. Like what are you tripping about? Yeah. You know, like something that Gary Vee would say, he's like, if you haven't, if you've been doing this for two years, then, then talk to me, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
So I don't know, like, what's your stance on that? How do you see, you know, content and how you're producing it in your life and your personal brand? What, what are the advantages, disadvantages of it, et cetera? So I have very similar problems, right? Like uh, we talked about it in the last, after we shut off the cameras on the last episode, but I want to put this in the episode. These episodes on YouTube, they do really well on Instagram, the clips and stuff like that. Yeah. On YouTube, because I don't have a big following on YouTube, they get like 300 views. And the comments below are like, listen, man, I really like these episodes, but I see you don't get a lot of views. Please don't stop doing this. Yeah. Like, please just keep going. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. like six comments. Yeah. But it's people being like, I know you're probably going to quit because nobody's watching this shit, but please don't. Like, I promise it'll work, right? Yeah. And it's just so funny to have someone be like, look, I know no one's watching yeah. this shit, but please. But um, <laughs> my point is this. I think that content, especially, I mean, I think for almost anyone, but especially for what you do, is like an absolute no question must. Okay. Like I think there's no way around Good. it whatsoever. Because there's a side of me that's like, bro, you're going to these parties shooting content when you could be sitting at home working? Yeah. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, I don't think, I think the content is worth more than most of that work, to be okay. honest. And it's cool. something I work on too. It's like I now look at my calendar and I say, look, you have two hours tomorrow. You don't need to sit at your desk and be available. Like you're better off using that time to go shoot a little video or do something. So. Okay. I just think that that's the truth of like what's going on, that's where we're at, that's whatever. I also think that it's a painfully, painfully slow growth. And Got that's it. just a fact. And I think that we're in a weird generation because right now when we look at like YouTube or Instagram, like influencers that are massive, we see all these numbers and we look at their content and we're like, Oh, like I'm doing something similar. Like, yeah. how come I'm not blowing up? Yeah. We are right in the window where all of the people who just started early are massive now, right? right? And they're just crushing it. And we're, but they got in in a very specific window. Yeah. When this stuff was all accessible to everyone, the quality was there for everyone, but the competition wasn't very big. Mm -hmm. And we are no longer, we no longer have that opportunity. And that opportunity isn't coming back, and that just is what it is. So now we're playing a different game than what they played, which is how do you build an audience in the most saturated place on planet Earth, yeah. right? And it is what it is. And the people who are going to win are the people who create good tent content when no one's watching and do it for five years. And then in five years, people are going to come. They're, it's going to be your esports business. You're following this thing you built. There's going to be articles about it. It's going to be like, how did he fucking do it? Social media gaming whiz kid. And you're going to be like, fuck you. Like, that shit sucked ass. <laughs> so right? hard. But then little kids, or young people are going to come up to you and be like, dude, how do I get a million followers? And you're going to be like, fuck off, kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Gonna be like, it's going to take you 10 years, bro. Walking <laughs> now and fucking yeah. we'll see. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I think that that's just Too what long. it is. There Too is, long. in this game, there is no shortcut, you know what I mean? But you'll have magical wins. You know, I, for instance, I did a short story long episode uh, the other day with Paul George. He's so epic. And thank you. And, yeah. and I knew, I know, I'm not a big basketball guy, like big, big. I know Paul George is obviously a superstar. Um, I, I know him decently well. It seemed like a cool interview. And then it got on the news sites. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. So now, after doing 110 episodes of that or whatever, I'm just doing an interview. I just asked him, why don't you, why didn't you come to LA? I would have personally, selfishly liked to see you play in LA. We could have hung out more, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that he hadn't answered that question anywhere else. Yeah. And that that was such a big question that a lot of people had. And so I didn't even dig that deep into it, yeah. right? But he just gave me an answer, whatever. And it got picked up by ESPN and Forbes and you know all, Bloomberg, all these different places. And it blew, you know, obviously really helped my numbers, really helped my awareness. But, but that was like a, just a nice little gift. I didn't plan for that. So what I'm saying is those things have happened to me a handful of times. As you start to build and grow, you'll naturally get those little wins. And you'll get those little moments. And people will reach out to you like they did on this one and say like, man, crazy. Like short story long is blowing up. Like right. you're so lucky, dude, whatever. And I'm like, fuck off. Like you know yeah. how many interviews I had like where I was like, years, why won't dude? this one yeah. work, you know? And... Um, it's just the long game, and it's the people who are able to sustain and do it with good quality for a very long time. That's the next version of the people who are going to win. Okay. So you have to do it. Okay. And it's going to suck for the next couple of years. Got it.
I got one special request, yeah. and then I'm done. Give it to me. For short story long, yeah. can you please get Scooter Braun on there? Yes, I promise you I will. Okay. Yeah. Did you watch his Scooter episode Braun. of Blueprint? Yeah. Killed it. Yeah, He's but great. I'm like, I want, I want drama's version of that yeah, yeah. story. Because obviously I'm much better. The, I mean, like, <laughs> basically, like, what I love about it is you have them tell this story in a way that, like, I'm sitting on a couch next to the guy, yeah. and he's like, boom, 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 boom. That's and I'm like, goal. what? Yeah. You know? The goal is always, I always try, because I don't know Scooter really, but, like, the goal even with a stranger is to, like, try by any means necessary to get them to just talk like we're friends. You just ask the right questions, Thank you know? You. So you. genuine. Well, that, that's how I see it. Constantly get better, and I promise that by the time your episode comes up, <laughs> I'll be 200% better. <laughs> I got to be having content out for five years on that episode. There you go. <laughs> uh, we did it, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, this man. This is a Seriously. great episode. This is real, like, high level, you know, smart questions. Like, you're Thank you know, I, the real I, deal. So I appreciate I that. This I've, will help a lot of people. I've been watching since Robin Big, Fantasy Fat. Like, it's trying to make you proud, man. This is really humbling to be here. You know, I, you. I, it's amazing what you've done. Thank so you, So thank you for having it. me here. We did it. This was awesome. Yes, sir.